Hey everybody, Neon here. Did another lovely episode of The Secret Shop, Just Anger and I today. I, I just got to turn on the, the recording partway through a conversation that we were having off cast. And uh, so it's a little bit of an abrupt start, a little bit off topic of a start, but we do eventually start talking about artifacts. So I just wanted to let you know about that because it's a little bit of a strange opening. But anyway, let's get right into the episode. Greetings, my friend. Welcome to the secret shop. Um, yeah, so one of like the, the stories that I have that was like, like that was back when I was in college, uh, there was like like townhouses that I would, that we were living in that they were like for like the dorms. It was a really weird setup. It was uh, at the, the University of Waterloo is the name of it. But um, yeah, like. I like I was you know a bit of a party animal back back in in first year of my my university. Um, but like some of the people who were in like my house was a really weird combination of people. Uh, one of the guys was a exchange student, I think, from or no, he wasn't exchange student. I think he was just new to the country uh, from like Bangladesh. Uh, mm-hmm. He was in like computer software engineering, and this guy like just nonstop party animal basically. <laughs> And, like, I remember, like, very distinctly, you know, after, like, I, I think there was, like, a Thursday night or something like that, like, getting in, you know, really late at, like, 3 a.m. or something like this. And he was just leaving at that point. <laughs> <laughs> like, going out with some friends or whatever it was at, like, 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. I can't even remember now. Yeah, that guy uh, did not make it to the second semester. <laughs> yeah. The other guys who I was looking at, there was like, there was four of us in total. I don't remember any of their fucking names. Um, the other, so there was one of them who was hardcore nerd, like absolutely just like, <laughs> like, so he was in computer science, I believe. And he was there, like, so his room was immaculate, just absolutely pristine. He ate like nothing but bagels and frozen pizza. <laughs> and he would play World of Warcraft like eight hours a day, every day. <laughs> and you could hear him fucking raging from like the other room. He's just like this like little tiny nerd thing, but he was just like like going off in TeamSpeak or whatever, uh, like at his, you know, like his teammates about it. It's just like, what is this fucking guy? This does this all day long, every day. And uh Man, he's he, living the dream. Yeah, he also did not make it past the second <laughs> semester. <laughs> so by the end of it, it was me and just this other guy who was also in computer science. I mean, this was a you know, computer science heavy university, but it was another guy. Like he was a really chill guy though. Um I like he was uh, good at calculus and bad at chemistry, which is one like one of the courses he had to take in first year. I was bad at calculus and good at chemistry, so we helped each other out a bunch in some of our uh, courses. So that was really sweet. He was he was awesome. I, I once again don't remember his fucking name, but uh, but we had like the house to ourselves for like the second half of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I I remember the place I used to live with. I lived with uh, three others. Uh, my my own age um and one of the guys who lived there was just one of the strangest fucking human beings i've ever fucking met i mean i have dealt with people who are socially retarded before but <laughs> this guy this fucking guy okay listen we were four people sharing each our room in an apartment right sure and some mess will end up coming eventually without anyone being like the 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 uh, what's the word like the offender so some sure. mess will just will just be there as a shared thing you know from everyone so no yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of like just like natural things like like dust and dirt getting yeah. around some yeah so you can't live in a, an apartment like that and then claim that none of it is your responsibility, you know? Sure, yeah. But this guy did. <laughs> this guy yeah. would not clean anything unless it was specifically him <laughs> who had done it. And that that was his excuse when he confronted him about not wanting to do shit. But he didn't even, he didn't even clean up his own mess. <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> Even when he was worst. fucking offended. That's the worst. Yeah, was, those guys are great. Where okay, if the dishwasher was clean, he would take out 
the specific dishes. <laughs> oh my that god! He had put in there. So fucking petty. I love it. it just just has no interest in helping out at all uh for that yeah see like my history of like living places by the way people who are listening right now i don't even know if i'm gonna put an intro before this or not uh maybe this is just the intro like we actually are going to talk about artifact eventually but right now we're just gonna bullshit for a bit so um yeah like like my list like history of, of you know, living in different places is a little bit unusual uh because like i was so after that that place that i was living i actually moved into a house that my mother had bought and then we were like renting out the rooms for it and like that was like we had a weird group of different people who like lived there over the time that we were doing that short like it was actually like so i'd lived there for a year like with that and then actually i got married (laughs) um (laughs) and, and like while i was in university like during my undergrad so my wife moved in to the house too so and then since then like we did a couple more years of living in that house and then since then i've just been living with my wife so it hasn't been like super weird but uh learning to like share chores and stuff like that with a significant other is quite the uh the thing that you can you can look forward to as you as you uh grow into that um but yeah no okay if you, if you guys are listening we're, this is all gonna stay in by the way <laughs> for sure um but it, like you know tweet at us and or you comment in the description about uh interesting living situations because i'm sure there's a lot of them out there uh don't know what's going on with, with simon right now hopefully he'll join us later probably but maybe we could just do this as like a rolling start kind of thing do it a, a little bit more casual because th- this is fun uh, how are you doing today anger i'm doing fantastic how are you doing fantastic i'm doing do really well really excited about the the beta that's about to happen the nda drop that's about to happen so it's going uh, to be just, so chaotic, man. Oh man, it's gonna be it's gonna be nuts. I mean, the fact that we have the weekend at least to kind of like ramp up a little bit means that it's not gonna be totally fucking insane. Um, but it's just gonna be like medium fucking insane. So the like the weekend, uh, so just to run over how things are working over the course of the next couple of days, the NDA officially drops. I I guess as at midnight on we like we don't know, know exactly the, the timelines for it but basically the weekend it starts that you that it's post nda so and it's not quite yet even when the the beta is open for the like the plebs it's only going to be still the the closed beta people who are you know like anger and friends who are still gonna have access to it so it means that over the course of the weekend there's this very weird you know, twilight zone area where Anybody who's in the beta already can stream it and produce content for it and release it. Uh, but people who are outside of it um, have to just just watch for a couple of days. And then the the beta opens up a lot. And then on Monday, it's going to be absolutely bonkers with people <laughs> coming in. It's kind of like how I expect it to, to work, right? Um, am I missing anything in terms of like the timeline of what will be happening over the next couple of days? No, but that is actually interesting. I hadn't thought about that, but you know, the NDA lifting on Saturday. Like uh is it hmm. I haven't thought about when on Saturday. But yeah. that have you heard anything about yeah, a specific time or anything like that? No, I haven't. I don't I really don't know. And I think that it would be I mean part of the thing for me is that like it doesn't infect me one way or another because I'm just going to be there, you know, refreshing Twitch or whatever Mm -hmm. until people uh, are able to start streaming so I can, so I can watch it. But for somebody like you, it'd be useful to get that information. Um, Maybe it's been something that's been like said somewhere in the closed beta channels. Uh, I I don't, I wouldn't Mm -hmm. know. So that's, that's exciting though, at the the very least. And you said though, that you are going to be streaming over the course of the weekend. So how about you tell people about what your plans are there so that they can, they can jump in and support you as you get started yeah, streaming I'm artifact. Yeah, disgusting. They stream twelve hours every day. <laughs> <laughs> Super opportunistic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's it's just okay. It is actually a joke me seeing that because the, one of the reasons why I'm going to be playing twelve hours every fucking day is because for like I, if i just randomly play any video game for many hours i feel super bad i feel super guilty because i feel like i'm wasting time you know mm-hmm. um but if i can do it while streaming i don't feel bad you know so basically if i stream artifact i have an excuse to play it for 12 hours straight <laughs> without feeling bad about playing a video game you know very so, nice yeah. So I'm not only disgusting, okay? I'm a little bit... It's a little bit... Uh, 
okay too. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool. Uh, so yeah, that'll be from uh, in EST times. That's gonna you said that it would be from eleven a.m. to eleven p.m. Is what you're planning to do uh, on yeah. uh, starting on Saturday for it. So I'm really excited to see that. Hopefully, I'll have a chance to stop by and and visit in and stuff. Play vicariously through you. That'll be exciting. Yeah. So, so lots of nonsense though going on with this weekend. There's gonna be a lot of shit going on this weekend. Like, there's so there's you who's gonna be streaming a bunch, of course. I imagine there's a ton of streamers who are going to just start unloading content, right? Like, we have uh, like I've, I've been talking to some other people who have have said that they have like a backlog of content that they're gonna just release, you know, over as soon as the NDA drops. That'll be insane. I expect. Yeah. Um, you said that you probably like you don't have very much that's like kind of like backed up that you're going to be releasing because you've been focusing more on doing just doing this lore stuff that you are able to do while the NDA is up. Yeah, yeah, and I don't think I'm good enough to the point where I should be making guides. Like one thing is sharing my mono green deck, you know why I think that is good, but I don't think like I should make advice videos about a game that. I'm 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 not necessarily very good at you know so I'm gonna wait and see where I place, um in in terms of however I still don't understand how the ranking system in artifact is gonna work, uh but you know, if I manage to get to a point where I'm actually good and people want to hear my advice then I can make those types of videos but until then I'm gonna be a little bit careful with it so I don't mislead anyone. Yeah. Well, actually, that uh, you know, ties into this this thing that I was talking about uh, the doing in the the last cast, which I've been doing these analysis videos, which I've been honestly really enjoying doing, and I feel like I'm getting better at. Uh, I would really appreciate anybody who has a chance to check those out and give me feedback on them. But I I personally can't wait for having more content to work off of for that because I've been working on the BTS stuff, which is obviously like absolutely spectacular quality content but yeah. uh having a, a more diversity because there's a lot of people who are going through the same content as well so i kind of like feel bad that i don't want to step on other people's toes so having a wider variety of it will be good too and um it's, it's just like interesting for me because uh, there's like part of me that's like you know i don't think the city should have made this play i think this was a mistake and it's just like well i actually haven't played this game and i'm telling somebody who's a hearthstone pro <laughs> what to do with <laughs> well, playing this game at time which is like a weird feeling but it, like i still think that it, it, it's valid but for you, right? You're I, I don't know anything about eternal and all and all of that, but but to from my understanding, you're really good at eternal and other card games and just hearing you talk about uh, artifact compared to other people who talk about artifact, it seems like you just have a better understanding and intuition about it simply from your experience from other games. So I I think your opinions matter. Yeah, and uh, it, it is more I mean, it's something that, like, also, I know that there, the structure of it is such that I can still contribute with that, even though I haven't played, because it's just something that you look at the plays, and I have the, 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 the luxury now that I can sit down and just, like, look at one play for, like, whatever it is, 10 minutes, 20 minutes of exactly one setup, and go backwards and forwards and see how things worked out, and I can do that kind of analysis after being stepped back from the game, and I understand that the actual players in the game have a much harder time with it, but doing that kind of in-depth analysis, when you are able to step back from the game, is really helpful and and what I enjoy doing. So I'll, I'll be hoping to do a lot more of that soon. Hopefully, even of my own games uh, eventually. <laughs> Probably not gonna be streaming it ex exactly because that requires a bit of a setup that I don't have yet. And um, but I, I really want to learn how to how to do that because there's there's a lot there's a decent amount to that, and I'd be interested to have the information under my belt. That does also relate to um, some stuff that's happening this weekend. There, there's the artifaction party not the artifaction party the RT bts artifact party that's happening this weekend i know that our boy swim is going to be hanging out in la again with the bts crew and there's like life coach and wife coach and i think maybe even ceviche is still there i'll have to go check to see but uh that'll be something that's pretty interesting and, and hype to see uh, are you gonna be tuning into that at all when you're not streaming <laughs> which is gonna be <laughs> the time but yeah well the party don't start till i walk in so. <laughs> clearly <laughs> No, nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be jealous and just not watch it. Yeah, but one of the things that's really exciting though is that we do have some information about even some early tournaments that are happening. Right, like there's one that's happening in Kiev, uh, the on release weekend. 
that Swim is going to be going to as a commentator that he was talking about in the Artifaction podcast. Have you? Did you see that news? Uh, no. No. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll find it and pull it up. The cave major is that? Is that um, you mean in Dota or in Artifact? No, no, no. There's a. It's not. A, it's not a major. It's a. It's a tournament thing that's happening. Um, I, I'm trying to remember the name. Of it, Mogwise. No, Charmer. That's who I'm looking for because I know that he's in it and was talking about it on Twitter. La Twitter. Yeah. Okay. So it is the We Play New Media tournament. They announced their talent lineup just uh, yesterday, I believe, and it is going to be that Charmer who is from uh, the Elder Scrolls Legends, and I know that he's been in the, the beta too uh, for for Artifact. Suns fan is going to be there also as part of the talent for it. Swim is there. Impetuous Panda and Mogwai are the ones who are going to be casting that. So that's pretty exciting that that's happening. I don't know if you, if you didn't see that, that that's uh, definitely something to check out that'll be happening, not this weekend, but next weekend that's that's going on. Um, other... Wait, didn't you say release weekend? Wouldn't that be in two weeks? Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm talking about. Not this, oh. this coming one, but the following one. The... Yeah, so the, they also have a list of the participants somewhere. So I will pull that up to you just to run through. Because this is like the first serious comp- competition for Artifact, which is pretty sweet that they're, they're doing something like this. And uh, that we can, for Constructed, this is Constructed Focus, of course. We obviously had the mm. draft tournament that happened over the course of the weekend. So Dog, Frozen, Super JJ, uh, Naaman. These are all the people who are from uh, Hearthstone, of course, Life Coach, Stan Sivka, Andre... Uh, Stratsky, he's actually from MTG. Wife Coach is going to be there as well. Height, uh, Pascal Maynard, another magic personality, Mr. Yagut. I could go through the whole thing. There's a lot more people than this. I'm not going to do the whole thing, probably. But yeah, a lot of high profile personalities from different card games are going to be showing up uh, for that. And then um, be streamed and everything like that. It's just kind of exciting to watch all this kind of shit take off, you know? Mm. Yeah. So um, with that, I think it'll be good to talk some about the uh, some of the other news that came out over the course of the week. Did you have a chance to talk to look take a look at the artifaction stats page or the uh, Dota buff stats? Uh, the Art buff, rather stats page because uh, the Dota buff stats, yeah, yeah, because both of them released their stats pages over the course of the week which was particularly cool. We, we didn't know that that was going to be something that was available, but having all like a stats focus pages to get all the information was really uh, interesting to me. I don't know. Like, what, did you have any thoughts from, for taking a look at that? Um, well, <laughs> you know, the win rates and stuff, it was a little bit, um, it was a little bit cool to just look at what heroes have highest win rates and what have lowest. And especially, you know, if you compare, it 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 doesn't. It's not like that for 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 every every hero, but rare heroes generally perform a bit better, and that's kind of good in draft because you know you don't want the good heroes to come up a lot. Yeah. But at the same, like it's kind of, it's kind of no like, no matter how they make it, it's gonna fuck someone over because if they make the good heroes come in. So people can actually get them in their packs for constructed, they're gonna fuck people over in drafts. Mm-hmm. But if they make them, if they make them rare, then nobody's gonna get them in packs, you know. And and the good cards are gonna be more expensive, which is something Garfield himself, I mean, um, Gabin himself said that power doesn't necessarily correlate with price or whatever. Uh, so I think maybe they should separate the rarities for the different modes or something. Like, I, I feel like the way it is now is just... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to work. That's just my thoughts. Yeah. I feel like for the, the price not necessarily correlating with cost, I think that we... I'm really interested to see how things look over the course of the next couple of days. Because, actually, can, can you tell us right now what beta build you're working on right now in the game? Like, does it look like the type of beta build that we're going to see come this weekend? Or is it still something that's before that? Or do, or do you even know? I have no idea what it's going to look like. 
because or like for instance like you still have open to your like god collection right like you you still have all access to all the guards correct yeah yeah okay so the That's what I said. So probably that'll change in a couple of days, because as I understand it, how it's going to function is everybody who's been in the the, the beta right now is going to have an account wipe starting on yeah. this this weekend. And so there'll be a lot of these you know, pack opening streams, etc. that are going to be going on. And with that, then they'll begin the economy. Uh, that'll that'll get jump started, which it will be really fascinating just to see how like the prices you know, look in those first couple of days before the the plebs get in there because th- that'll just be driven by just you guys and I, i'm really interested to see where things land as a result of that but yeah we're gonna get that happening and then we will actually begin to see within a week or two how much decks actually cost because like i think that definitely there are going to be some cards that are more expensive than others i don't think there's any way to stop that necessarily and the most desirable cards the most uh, you know, interesting cards are going to be the ones that are going to be the most expensive. I think that the thing that, that, that they really said about it was also about like rarity correlating with power. And there just seems to be a lot of really good, you know, commons and uncommons, like even within the heroes that we saw. So I'm very interested to see how it actually lines up. I still stand personally by my estimate of between 50 and $80 for competitive decks, but we'll have to see within the next mm-hmm. couple of weeks. But like, okay, for example, like what happened with um, Drow and uh, Luna, where they had to buff up their rarity because they were too uh, good in draft. Yeah. Right? If that's the way they're going to balance the draft, then they they can't say that rarity does not correlate with power because, yes, it do- like, it literally does. Yeah, that's true. You know? Uh, and most of the heroes that are good in draft, maybe excluding, you know, Sven, uh, probably some others. I'm not. I can't think right now. But you know, a lot of the heroes that are really good in draft are also really good in constructed, like Drow, for example, and Luna. They're pretty much auto include in any blue or green deck. You know. Yeah. yeah so. So. I mean, it, it was something that I think that they, some of the things that they said early on were a little bit over promising in how they were doing it. Which is, is something that I notice a lot in the, the various things that they said in the early stages, especially like when they, for instance, suggested that there would be a beta that was happening in the spring, which of course, like, you know, here we are in November. <laughs> um, so that is a, it's been a weird uh, transition over the course of that time. So like particularly using the, like the phraseology of that power and cost and, and and rarity wouldn't necessarily be correlated like that's just a kind of a recipe for disaster at some level of making such a definite claim well well but but the thing is like about when the game releases and when the beta is out like i understand that it, that is very difficult to predict because then you're setting a time frame and you don't know if the game is going to be finished by then so that that i can't just forgive like i actually understand and i think it's good that they do that and don't uh, rush things, you know? I'd rather have a good game. But when he says in his presentation about Artifact, like, this is is a big focus for us, you know? Then I kind of expect them to respect that to the point where actually separating, or maybe having a specific different rarity system in draft uh, like there's no way that can be that hard making it so that no i mean you're totally right like that's in, totally possible to do yeah yeah and I, I i think the way they have made it now where they they, they balance draft with with rarity that will make the game more pay to win like they they said specifically in that presentation that the game will be not free to play, but not pay to win. Now they're making it pay to win. Well, like, like I knew it was going to cost money. I but mean, it, it, if it they continue, so much it relates to what their definitions were there, and I think what the definitions that they had in their head were not the same of what people were hearing, and and that's on them that they weren't communicating that clearly. Like the the mm-hmm. the logic that I think that Garfield like later articulated uh, more clearly about like what his understanding and what his vision of pay to win 
meant is the idea of like for instance there are mobile games where you can purchase power-ups or or whatever that oh, are like yeah. just like infinitely scale for it and that's something that's like really toxic and that's like like purely truly pay to win and that you just dump yeah. more money into the game and you do better and like if that is the definition that you're using of pay to win artifact isn't pay to win because there's kind of a limit to how much you can you can spend before you just get nothing new out of it right like if you're paying like anything that that's beyond what is necessary to buy a complete collection you don't you're not getting any anything for it so that but like so that i think is is like a difference of understanding that but he specifically he specifically explained that what he meant by pay to win is the fact that power and rarity won't be correlated and now they're making it correlated you know yeah that that's why i'm bringing it up I'm, yeah and but I'm, and, I'm, and I'm the thing is that i like i'm saying is like I'm, I'm definitely not disagreeing with you and i think that you like, like you're like what you're saying is like well how do you do this while balancing draft and constructed and this pay to win stuff all at the same time and i think that, that you're basically like finding out that like demonstrating this fact that they couldn't live up to this this standard and this is why i'm saying that i think that they overpromised for is that they wanted to do that but then they kind of like realized like we can't we just can't have drow being on common um while still maintaining they it can. yeah they can like when you're they saying can. in terms of like changing the balance of draft and for constructed opening packs like like if they wanted to change those two i think that that's actually an interesting suggestion yeah Especially because they're going to make draft so expensive. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know, you, like you're saying that it's expensive, but like me coming from a Magic the Gathering background is like, wow, this is so cheap. Uh, but I'll actually, let, let's, th <laughs> let's talk about that because this is a really good place to, to go from here. And it's exactly what I want to oh, talk yeah, about. Oh, yeah, you're right. So I did, because I did play a few draft tournaments uh, when I was younger, playing Magic the Gathering when I was like 16. And they cost a lot. Like it, oh, yeah. it was like probably 15 dollars yep. for for one tournament yeah um so the in some ways people who are familiar with magic the gathering online magic the gathering but like by the way has multiple online programs <laughs> which just makes things really easy to understand of course but uh the in some ways the artifact economy feels similar to the magic the gathering online economy which is not a good thing, necessarily. Uh, the, <laughs> the Magic the Gathering online economy is notoriously horrible in, in a variety of ways. A lot of that has to do with the back end of it, the way in which they have their trading system and their marketplace is set up. So I think that this that artifact has a good chance of avoiding some of those problems. But still, like it's it, this is not a good um, game to compare it to. So with yeah. uh, the... So, so how it works is you buy event tickets and packages of five. These event tickets can be used to get into different events. Some of the events examples include the um, phantom drafts and keeper drafts. Phantom drafts are the, it's a draft in which you don't keep the cards that you draft. So. <laughs> and you still have to pay for it? No, but you get, you get tickets and, and you get packs out of it if you, if you win though. I haven't done the math yet of like what the return of investment is, but it costs one ticket, so one dollar functionally, to to do this, and it's either five wins or two losses that you like whichever happens first is, is how the events function. Um and you get three wins, you get your event ticket back. So that means that it pays for itself then if you get three wins oh, or higher. Yeah. <clears throat> so as long as you can maintain a a sixty percent win rate. Or higher you actually kind of go infinite in in a way yeah um but then if you get four wins you get a, a, an event ticket and a pack and if you get five wins you get an event ticket and two packs so i actually like wait i i remember somebody telling me that you can't go infinite with artifacts but i can't remember yeah uh, what they said about why they're, they're wrong they're just flat wrong i i will uh say that because like given this uh set up for it you definitely can uh because really? like for instance with the, this event ticket is like if you are always if you maintain a 60% win rate uh, or higher in this you can continually refresh it now it does depend more on terms of the the matchmaking system that they use if they don't use any matchmaking like it's just a random queue then 
it you like definitely good players can very easily go infinite um if they do use an mmr system on top of that it'll be a lot harder than that because everybody's win rate is going to be centered a lot closer 50 percent other than the people who are at the very very tippity top mm. yeah so th- that'll be that'll be interesting to to see for but yeah so one event ticket for three wins one event ticket one pack for four and one event ticket uh two packs for five so that'll be really fascinating i plan to do a a lot of that business and um if we do end up seeing draft being very popular this will really bring down the cost of the the decks and part of the reason also just like one clarification um, as to why it's possible to go infinite because you can look at these scheme and say it's like well if you ever go two losses or you know, two wins or less then you fall out of the system it's like well you can then sell these packs for event tickets right so, yeah. so you if if I you know, win a bunch of packs and then suddenly I go on a bit of a losing streak and just sell the tickets, sell the, the packs and get tickets out of it. Um, and then the I wonder. Oh, go ahead. I I I think the or I hope that the games in Artifact will be uh, constructed will be more like Captain's Draft in Dota, and then Draft will be more like you know normal matchmaking. Oh, so you mean like the that the well, sorry can you can you explain more what that means i don't know if i understand oh yeah uh, uh, captain's mode means that you 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 uh you get a team and then there's one captain and he bans and picks all the heroes for everyone sure. and basically take the leadership role uh, i mean he or she you know we're <laughs> gonna be gender neutral uh, wow uh, you're so then... sexist come on think about the women <laughs> and and you know that that's how all tournaments are yeah, you know in in captain's draft uh but for normal normal matches in everyday Dota, most people don't search captain's mode. Mm-hmm. Uh, most people, you know, they just go normal normal ranked matchmaking, um, and and I don't know. I I hope that maybe like kind of that distribution it's going to be in draft and constructed too, because I can't see constructed getting very popular over a long time at the start i think it's going to be because everybody and their fucking mother is going to be building their own decks and trying them out and then realizing oh there's a formula to what is good (laughs) um and net deck or whatever that term is where you just copy somebody else's deck yeah is that right yes net net decking yeah um uh so but but with draft even though there kind of is a formula for that too like what is good you still need to have the intuition to know what to pick when, when, when you ha- when you get multiple good cards and you have to choose between them, and then building the deck afterwards, deciding what colors you want to go for and when you want to take a hero and all that. That's what has explained to us. Uh, so I feel like draft is. It, I, I'm hoping that draft is going to be what most people will be playing. Yeah, I think that the. If I had to bet right now, it feels like people are more excited about draft than they are about constructed. And uh, that's really shocking from the perspective yeah. of every other card game that I've been a part of. But it I think that there's a really good chance that you'll see that that there are a lot of there's a lot more excitement about it. The pros seem more excited about it too. That'll draw some more attention to the draft as well. So I I really don't know what to expect exactly in going forward, because I think that there's a good deal of uh, like for instance, when you're talking about the net decking thing, this is something that actually is kind of a blanket for a lot of players who aren't as comfortable doing the drafting stuff themselves. That they can you know, have the cushion of just saying like, okay, I'm going to be taking Lie Coach's deck or Swim's deck and just run with it, and I don't have to think about that. That's something that's less uh, intimidating to players. Mm. So that that might be part of it too that um it, it brings more people to it not necess- because it's almost less competitive in in some ways, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot of tournaments opting for a structure that is more close to a draft uh, focused structure. So I cuz there's just been so much more excitement around that format. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I'm really interested though to to see how that that turns out. Just the idea. Of- it's just so much more interesting. Both, like especially as an observer, it's just so much more interesting because you know you have the whole drafting aspect. Like what what cards does 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 he or she pick, and then what cards does he or she put in their deck, and then they play. You know. Mm-hmm. 
um, and then they have to switch it up after three three rounds. Well, I mean, just it's just so much more expensive. Even though maybe I, because I, I'm a big fan of building decks, like I'm a super super big deck building nice. enthusiast. Yeah, uh, and I like playing constructed and trying out my deck too. But it's gonna be very boring when everybody just plays the best decks. Even though that's kind of you know maybe dumb of me to say that. Oh, I don't I don't like people playing the best decks. You know, fucking try hard. <laughs> uh, but but I do think it's fun to try out cool things and see if they actually work, you know? Yeah. I mean, I I think that that whole deck, I mean, that'll be something that'll be great to talk about another time. I have I have thoughts. I have thoughts on the, um, the deck checking <laughs> versus the, the, the build your own uh, style of thing. Because that's in, in some ways, in some card gaming communities, it's actually very controversial because there are people who are particularly anti- net decking so i think though mm-hmm. i personally think that it's that, it, that it's fine but we'll save that to to another time just the idea though that the uh like i think in you know once again reddit did kind of overreact when they saw some of this information as they're wont <laughs> to do uh it does say here that that there are free ways to play that you can play against your friends you can sign up for just casual play that is that is free. Uh, there's we don't know anything about the matchmaking that's going on there, which I think is a, a bit of a concern for people. But the fact that there are free play modes that you can just have your deck and then play against whoever you want, it makes it actually quite reasonable in terms of of price. Now, in order to actually get into the serious constructed, you know, game modes, they they do ask you to pay some amount of money. I have to do a quick analysis about this. Um, Actually, I'm going to do a quick bit of of math and I can actually do this right now because I know I have one of these spreadsheets open. This is how much of a fucking nerd I am. Uh, (laughs) Because I I literally just like a couple of days ago did a similar thing for for Eternal and like, just cut. This is how Neon has fun. He does fucking math and spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it, it's just like the way that the thing is for me is like it's, I have a problem. Okay, is actually how you should understand it. Where I like somebody says something, it's like, oh, I wonder how this works, or oh, I wonder how this math works out. And it's like, Jesus fucking, I have to know now. So, <laughs> so I'm just gonna cut for half a moment and uh, do some math and get back to you with some answers. Okay, so I just did a bit of quick math and. If you have a 50% win rate uh, and you just played an infinite number of games and you entered into a gauntlet like this, the one that has the one gold, uh, the, the one entry ticket um, you know, cost, you are expected to get 90 cents back worth of value. Oh. So it's you, you're basically really spending 10 cents per run. Really? Yeah. Because... Um, like I, I've done this math a bunch of times before, and I, I'm not gonna be able to justify this in the podcast. It's not a good format for doing this. But if you actually like go through the math and say 50% win rate, every game was a you know heads or tails sort of thing, your expected value from each run is 0.9 uh, dollars. That's also assuming though that packs are worth two event tickets which isn't necessarily going to be the case. Like in the exchanges that might end up being, like I could see that the pack value decreasing in, in some ways. So it's often, it's really tied to that. But if we assume that the event tickets hold a dollar each and that the packs are worth $2 each, the value is about 90 cents. So it's only 10%, you know, like 10 cents per run that you're actually being cost. Yeah. Which seems reasonable to me. Mm, that's pretty cool. Like, like when you think about it that way, like, because because the, the, the thing that people see is like it costs a dollar to run. That's so expensive, dollar per run. But you you have a really high chance of getting your dollar back. Yeah. So. Yeah, and but but it is concerning though, because I want draft to be the biggest thing that everyone plays. Like you said, if constructed is free to 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 play, and draft costs money to play. Will that mean most people are going to play constructed? You think? I think that there's so one thing I will say is like we can compare this even to Magic the Gathering Online. Magic the Gathering Online, um, oftentimes they don't have a Phantom Draft mode that's available. Like this is just talking about Phantom Draft. But there's also Keeper Draft too. Like uh, Keeper Draft is the idea that you actually keep the cards that you that you draft. Uh, Keeper Draft in Magic the Gathering Online is very popular, uh, or at least it was for a very long time. I haven't played for a while now. Um, but it's fucking expensive. And, but the reason that people play it is because it's really fun. 
So mm-hmm. now the, the fact that we have this like, like pretty reasonably priced version of Phantom Draft, it seems like the costs are going to be quite reasonable for that. Now, I do think though that you're that what you're you're saying of like which one is going to be more popular for it, for it, the fact that it costs money at all could be kind of a mental deterrent for people. Like if you actually like go through the math yeah. and see it's like, oh, it's actually like even if you're an average player, you're going to get most of your money back. That is <laughs> a you, you like you don't want you're going to be saying like, okay, well it's not that really bit that big of a deal. But just when you have this like mental thing is like, oh, this costs money. That can be a turnoff. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, I'm really interested to see how that turns out for it. Um, and there's there's definitely a lot of uh, stuff to really uh, figure out still. But um, I think that the keeper draft ones are um, it, it's kind of <laughs> funny that the so two it costs two tickets plus five uh, packs to enter, and the prizes are either two event tickets, one pack for three wins, two event tickets, uh, two packs, or two event tickets, three packs, depending on three, four, or five wins. I feel like that is not going to be particularly popular. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any other thoughts on this before we move on to something else? Um, no. I think, yeah, no. No. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we need to talk about because we kind of covered a lot of the different stuff and not necessarily any particular order uh but was there anything else that's been going on that you are excited to chat about or that you have on your mind well finally everyone can fucking play this fucking yeah. game <laughs> yeah i know that's the same. it's it's so unreal. i feel like it was only yesterday that it had like it was right before PAX and the release date had been announced. And I, every day I updated my Discord name to the amount of days <laughs> remaining until the release. Yeah, I remember that. And it was like 130 or something. I don't remember. It was so long ago. But it feels like it was only yesterday. And now it's like one or two weeks away. I don't know. Yeah, finally fucking here. But, um, Oh my god, it's it's just crazy that the game is finally coming out, and I still remember when we played like two hour long games in TTS. Hey, I have to talk to you about TTS right now. This program, I don't know what's going on. I can't get it off my computer now, and it's like just like herpes, just just like <laughs> things up, making it horrible. I hope other people haven't had this same experience because we recommended everybody to try it out for whatever reason. It just not want to get off my Mac and has made my life difficult because I don't have a lot of hard drive space because I fill it with all of this shit that I do all day <laughs> of the videos and the, the, the podcast and everything like that. So that'll be, um, uh, that that's somebody that uh, I've been frustrated with uh, personally. But yeah, no, I remember that you know, really clearly. I remember, you know, talking about, like, I remember clearly, here's one that I remember talking about with, with you guys on the podcast is talking about Time of Triumph when we first saw it. And being like, ah, it seems really expensive. Um, you know, like how often does this really like win you the game and stuff like that? Like, I, I'll <laughs> never go back and listen to those old ones because I'm sure that you're just absolutely yeah. stupid. Uh, you're gonna look, like, yeah. which I expected. Like, I was totally ready to be an idiot. Uh, you know, in in the future for the sake of the content. Um. I think you're going to have to wipe. We're going to have to start over the podcast. <laughs> Entirely the new, just <laughs> new podcast uh, c- called The Item Shop that will um, yeah. Yeah, no relationship whatsoever. Oh, this is the secret shop because it's going to be unlisted. So nobody, uh, you have to dig to yeah, find yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I gotcha, I gotcha. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, and then the new one is the side shop. The side <laughs> shop, gotcha. Yeah, no, that, that'll work. I, li- I like it. We'll, we'll, we'll workshop this off, off cast. But yeah, no, I'm... I am unbelievably excited. I was so impressed with the stuff that happened this weekend too, that they like still going through these videos. Like I've been learning a ton just by analyzing them so closely. And it really has felt like me, like this game is incredibly deep. I've also been shocked, honestly, going through these videos, how many mistakes players are making. And it's like, it it takes a while to realize what's going on, but you're like, no, even these high level players are definitely making mistakes. And that kind of yeah. gives me a lot of hope of like this game is going to take a very long time for people to solve. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and and and, and it's something. Uh, I think that's why. And in, in for example, like Dota, one of the best ways to improve is to watch your own replays, and that's something I think is going to be very important in in Artifact too. Because I also, while playing, especially in the last tournament, 
because I was so confident because my my decks were mm. really good. But I fucked it up by misplaying. Like like I I can't blame anything else for the losses other than me playing bad because my decks were solid, you know. Uh, and I, I think that that's actually like a big so, thing too is that when when you make a, a mistake in a game, it can be really punishing. Like for instance, if you fuck yeah. up a hero deployment, like your game's over. And in some in some games, yeah. not every every game, there's there are but there are a lot of games where if you get that wrong and it's pretty easy to get wrong in different ways. Like the game will spiral out of control as a result of that. And just given that level of stakes, it's going to be really interesting to see how the game develops over time because I actually think people underestimate how high the skill cap is in this game. Yeah. Of course, there's RNG, yeah. you know, but 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 there's you have to control around the RNG. And if you if you play a card too early or too late or in the wrong order mm -hmm. or uh, accidentally <laughs> pass the initiative or accidentally play a card when you should have kept the initiative or like you said, deploy in the wrong lane or like there's so many things that will fuck up the game for you regardless of RNG. Well, and, and that's, a, that's the thing is like, I'm kind of like, it's about like how badly you're punished for your mistakes in some ways. Like if you mm -hmm. get those things wrong, like if you play for initiative in the wrong situation or manage it incorrectly there, like the game goes very badly afterwards. And it's just not obvious either because I think that one of the critiques that we see a lot from other card games like for instance hearthstone people will just say it's like oh it's curve stone you just play the most expensive card that you can that you can play every turn and that's the game and you try to trade efficiently yeah. and like that's so like and i mean like obviously it's a bit of a character culture of it but like 75 percent or something like that of the decisions that you're making you know 95 something somewhere in that range is all autopilot and if you just did you use the the basic rules of it, you get a good percentage of the way there. And it's only that last 10% of decision making or whatever it is that matters and is actually you know, difficult to do. In Artifact, there's a lot less of it that is autopilot. Yeah. So with that, that'll, I think, be everything for today. Thank you so much for joining us. It was just your lovely little chat with Anger and I here. Uh, you know, for, but it was interesting and fun change, but um, and it's going to be a little bit shorter too, but that's fine because we all obviously had a, a cast earlier in the week as well. We Talking about all the things we've got going on. I don't think there's anything else to plug. Actually, one thing I do want to plug just on our way there also is uh, the, the the video that you did with VNN that was finally released, the Art of Fun uh, video <laughs> forwarded by the play artifact account they're just officially you know supporting <laughs> your theory about uh dota being stolen by ice frog from norwegian cassette tapes <laughs> or whatever it is so that's that's exciting stuff <laughs> yeah i uh, uh the thing with artifun is that even though a lot of people uh didn't get the joke you kind of have to have followed both Reddit and all yeah, the news yeah. very closely and the tournament coverage to really get the jokes because they're not very blatant. <laughs> um, but, uh, um, but but it was so fun making it because while recording and while making it, we were having so oh, yeah. much fun because, you know, we yeah. get the joke. So, for example, um, the podcast part where we talk about heroes and uh, and and cards and and uh, yeah, it's, and uh, and analyzing it's okay. them. I, w I wouldn't play it in in constructed. It's just, I think it's just in draft. You know? Oh yeah, no. It's, yeah, it's yeah, okay. yeah. I think I just play it, play it in draft, <laughs> not non constructed. Yeah, no. That's like like basically lifted, well, so basically funny. lifted verbatim from like when Swim and <laughs> and Lumi were on the cast. <laughs> <laughs> so we're basically taking a dump on everyone. Yeah making uh, an analyzing content including yourself and, including and i'm allowed too, to right? because yeah. i yeah, i exactly. do that yeah and i think that, i think I that's what that. really works and it you, too look at that me. you're not like you're shitting like like somehow taking a shot at somebody like me who does this kind of stuff it's like like you, it makes it clear that at the one level we all are taking this like children's card game extremely seriously <laughs> it's actually it's not even <laughs> yeah. fucking out yet so that's hilarious uh, for us so i i but better but uh, better than the 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 draft versus constructed joke uh, the most funny thing to me is how, because we had planned out some words sure. in beforehand that sounded like uh, card game uh -huh. terms, but they were actually just words oh, we had okay. made up. 
and we included them like we we slowly but surely included them while talking about um yeah, the yeah. cards and this was all impromptu like we hadn't planned it out at all but we ended up actually defining <laughs> some of the words like for example uh, cosmagnetic yeah, 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 yeah. and, uh, and uh, flash I, I, I and, got uh, some of those and uh, fire line yeah lines. yeah yeah I, I thought that those were good um my well, honestly like my favorite little touch of it, it it's so weird that this is the thing because this is also i think because i'm a, a video creator is the fact that you have this like image of you like zoomed in like close to your fucking eye and then tyler is in the corner underneath the logo basically like you have that one like that to me that little touch of him being underneath the logo that is what set me off because i am the youtube like guy i'm doing these the videos myself so that i found fucking hilarious because you'd like move it and be like oh no it's just the the little like watermark thing and it's there and you can't do anything about it it's just like an over its fucking thing. i thought that that was hilarious yeah yeah it's <laughs> man, and and man tyler he's he's such a fucking hilarious guy he's one of the funniest people i fucking know yeah. it's um yeah he's, he's also one of the best fucking actors i've yeah. ever seen because we also did um the art analysis podcast which is like part of the world yeah. building it's a completely different podcast where we talk about acts for <laughs> one hour <laughs> making fun yeah, of yeah. the podcast yeah. including you know what yeah. i do so i'm allowed yeah. to you know uh but in it tyler is acting like like oh it's so it's kind of cringy to watch it because i'm a terrible <laughs> actor uh so I, I i couldn't help but crack smiles all the time just laughing yeah. at him but he kept serious oh yeah i mean i like and, and i'll admit that i haven't like watched his like channel like too closely because it, it's something that i mean there's a lot of the content that's on there that i doesn't really interest me i'm like into like tf2 or whatever so but tyler is he's 200 iq for sure <laughs> but yeah like the like i um i i all the stuff that i have seen though i hadn't seen that side of him and so seeing that like on full display in these videos is really interesting. So I thought that those are really fun. Of course, people can go take a look at that. I'm sure that you have other um, you know, very important analysis work to be doing with him in the future that we can look forward to. <laughs> so with that, though, I think that that'll be everything. Um, take care. It was lovely to, to have you in this and uh, hopes to see you in the beta really soon. Peace. Thank you. Thank you for your business. It's a good thing I'm not recording. I can cut this all out. It'll be the first podcast ever with live math. <laughs> Quick maths. Yeah, man. Why are you wrong? Oh, I know what I'm doing. Uh, I know. At least you're being very nice and constructive to the math. You're not just blatantly saying you are wrong. <laughs> you're asking why they are wrong, so they have to reflect. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 important. You, the math is your friend. <laughs> you, have to, you have to be nice to the math. <laughs> I mean, math is my friend. One of one of my very closest friends. <laughs> Is that because you don't have any other Be quiet. friends? No, I didn't, I didn't ask you, okay? <laughs> <laughs>